going back through the ages, and is there a shock to come oh, from some yes, somebody really Yes, there is. Okay, he spoke. He spoke. So, without more ado, can I please present my great friend, Master Astrologer Steve Jones? Hello, world. <laughs> it's the 9th of April, twenty twenty-four. It's mid late afternoon, and I'm sat next to perhaps one of only two astrologers who I really have the utmost respect for. I've admired Penny for a long time. I hold my head up to her. She's been doing astrology longer than I have. <laughs> but that's, that's not something. because I'm older than you. Which just, I am. Just pretty old, right. <laughs> um, and, and we decided to just do this just for the hell of it and to get proper astrology out into the world. Because without wishing to pick ourselves up, we are, we know what we're doing. We're both good astrologers and we both got a finger on the pulse in terms of the world's astrology at the moment. So we want to do something now uh, about contemporary astrology in the 21st century, particularly in 2024. Hope you enjoy it. Where should we start? Well, today, when this video goes up, as we mm -hmm. have decided, being the great astrologers we are, <laughs> Um, to actually launch this on the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction of the 20th, 21st of April. This is really a monumental moment, really. Yes, this conjunction happens every 14 years or so, but it's the time that this is happening, the current time that we are living in. Eclipses, we've got all sorts of things going on in the astrology. And in a way, because uh, Uranus is very much the planet of astrology, certainly the planet of technology and space and all those kind of uh, uh, rarefied things, the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction is the moment we would like the spread of astrology to it's, really go It's nuts. an amazing signal for, for launching something, for beginning something new. Absolutely. And, and, and when you look at the mythology, I mean, Uranus is Jupiter's grandfather. Right. I mean, Saturn was Jupiter's father and Saturn was Uranus's son. And both neither Jupiter or Uranus are that sort of, so we say, sociable with Saturn. <laughs> so um, grandfather, grandson. And they, they really, you know, how many people can say, oh, I really had a good time with my granddad or my grandma. Sometimes you get on better with the grandparents than you do with the parents, you know. Absolutely. And I think that this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction is is a wonderful opportunity to launch, initiate, begin something new in a really positive way. And that's for everyone, both individually and collectively. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's coming at the right time. And I think um, that we need to remember, as I always remind you on my own videos, that there's nothing in astrology that is ever one thing. It's not just one note. It's like a full orchestra. So any planet, mm -hmm. any point, mm -hmm. any aspect has a tier of meanings. So we could look at this beautiful Jupiter-Uranus conjunction and think, how fabulous is that? We're going to have a growth, a spurt in kind of consciousness or knowledge. We're going to advance. We're going to break barriers. We're going to have things happening at this time that are going to change the world in very good ways. But, oh, my goodness, no. We have a whole other aspect of Jupiter and Uranus oh, together. Yes which is very, very destructive. It, it, it's like a giant crescendo in a symphony of multifaceted orchestral representation. It's crossing so many different dimensions that it's like a crescendo across the board. And then it's going to dissipate, or but not fade away, the seed will carry on, hopefully, for the very long-term future. Absolutely. I would, we want to come back to this in a minute because there's something really important about this particular Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. But just to be very simple, we're working with two planetary keywords, if you want. We're working with Jupiter, which is expansion. It expands anything that it connects to, so to speak. And of course, you can have good growth and you can have inflation and you can have all sorts of escalations, things getting out of control. And with Uranus, you've got the principle of change. You've got revolution. You've got breakthroughs, breakdowns, breakups, all those three B words, which are fabulous for astrology. So at this present time, we can see all the things going on in our world, whether you're 
really celebrity followers. You're going to see lots of big breakups you didn't expect. We're going to see breakthroughs in deadlock situations, and we're going to see incredible breakdowns of communication, whether that is with the internet and that kind of digital world, or whether it's parties trying to reach a solution you're going to find a lot of people and, not able to, or a lot of countries really on the precipice of uh, really splintering apart. To, just quickly before we, you take over for a minute, I don't want to grab the screen from you. That's it. Um, I put together very, I don't like things to be simple. And if you take those two words, you take Jupiter growth and you get Uranus change very simply. Change equals growth. There can be no growth without change. And the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction kind of epitomizes that. It does indeed. And I would suggest one further word with regards to, uh, relating to Jupiter on this, and that's amplification. Good word. And um, with, with Uranus bringing change, which can be both positive and challenging, sometimes both at the same time, we all live at various different times with Uranian energy for our lives because it has an 84-year orbit. You know, it affects us all at various stages in our life. But to have Jupiter on top of Uranus is going to amplify the immediacy and the urgency and the need for quite radical change. This is not advocating revolution or rebellion, but it is advocating a new approach to the future, innovation and novelty without getting too stuck. I notice it's in Taurus, which isn't the most flexible. It's interesting, thing. isn't it? And, yeah. and you think about agriculture, don't you? You yeah. think about buildings, you think about the earth. And of yeah. course, we've got a lot of problems with the climate change, mm -hmm. the heat, the scorching of the earth. Um, you know, so there's a lot of things that apply to that. And mm -hmm. every time I saw some a country in Europe uh, with the tractors going blocking the city routes, I thought, oh, yeah, that's it. That's Jupiter Uranus in Taurus. We want to complain about the problems that we're having with agriculture, you know. Also, I think it's got a lot to do with, with the way money is used in our society as well. You know, every country in the world is in debt. <laughs> everyone owes everyone else money and the idea of debt is something that seems to be becoming so yeah it's part of life yeah. yeah but it's becoming redundant yeah you know yeah. what would happen if we if if all of a sudden there was no global debt wow wouldn't that be great <laughs> wouldn't that bring in a massive change but then wouldn't a lot of people just go okay we've worked sleep straight pink let's borrow lots of money again True. It's, a, it's about this is about an upgrade. The, exactly. And it's an upgrade of consciousness as much as anything else. Yeah, and I think too, when you think about the new currency, Bitcoin, well, is it that new? It's been around yeah. for a while, but you'd think that you put these two principles together, Jupiter and Uranus, you'd get a growth in Bitcoin. I mean, a surge in it. Or is it going to go out of control and sort of well, maybe blow it's just, itself up? Maybe it's just about trade and the way we've always traded with each other. Mm. You know, this this it's a massive rethink for a global economy, and it's hopefully a big upgrade, which is going to stimulate us with lots of new ideas. Because without those new ideas, we're just going to end up in a state of decay and entropy. Yeah, and it is a time of great change. And I think put together with Pluto having just gone into Aquarius, um, it, you know, we've got many, many signals that the world is... Uh, you know, in a dangerous place on the one hand, but also when we think about danger and we think about, you know, no risk, no reward. It's, a, it's exciting. You know, it's exciting at the same time. So coming back to the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction again, which it happens on the 20th, 21st yeah. of April. But of course, as Steve said, you know, it's around and about. It's it, it's 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 a, you can think about the whole year in a way, couldn't you? Or at and least think, a month or two. Yeah. yeah, you can think about the 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 breakthroughs, the breakdowns, the breakups that happen, and they will be dotted around through the year. But especially when the sun or the moon, well, not the moon, but Mercury, the personal planets, make a connection with these two when they're close together. But if we go back to 1941, we had the Jupiter Uranus conjunction in Taurus again. Now, why would that be? Well, of course, Uranus takes about 82, 83 years to go all the way around the sun. It's That's its orbit, and it goes all the way around your chart. So if you're listening to us and you're 83 years old, you're 
having your Uranus return, but you're having your Jupiter Uranus return. Mm. And it's quite interesting that 1941, the war years, yeah. and some interesting bounces we're getting sort of right now because you know, the first computer was developed. It was completed oh, by Zeus or whatever his name was, which is yes. interesting. And, and we had all this sudden forced um, acceleration of technology with the new uh, aeroplane engines, with the new weapons systems. You know, it bore forced us into accelerating our technology at this time. Absolutely. And the whole thing with the atom bomb and everything yeah. was being developed. And the idea of the bounce is, of course, here in 2024, not only have we been a little bit more anxious about, you know, nuclear, the possibility of a nuclear uh, exchange at some point, it became pressing at a couple of points of the year. But also we had Oppenheimer literally sweep the Oscars at um, uh, this year's Oscar ceremony. And that's like a little bounce. It's like a resonance if we go back and then as you look at all the different jupiter uranus conjunctions that there have been as we go through uh these 83 years these things come back again the 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 nuclear threat the currency all sorts of volatility in the uh in the money markets we've got revolutions particularly with the most recent jupiter uranus conjunction which is in 2010 2011 we yeah. had the Arab Spring. I mean, all those wonderful sense of cry freedom. You know, we're going to be a democracy. But that was at the very start. That, of was, that was at the end of Pisces, yes. start of Aries. Yeah, exactly. Where Saturn exactly. and Neptune will be in a couple of years' time. Yes, and think what's going to happen there. That's another video. <laughs> we'll book in another time. So sh should we look at this? We've got a little the, circle here. Yeah. Um, it's it, we can actually sort of see the the cycle. And Steve, do you want do you want to take us the, around? The the next Jupiter con Uranus conjunction was in the mid fifties, fifty four, fifty five generation, and at the same time there was a huge Neptune square to this Jupiter Uranus conjunction, and the people born of this generation, of whom I'm one. I, 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 most of them that I know, they're the people who opened the doors to a lot of other people's perception. They didn't necessarily go through those doors, but they opened the doors. And and I think this is a time where, for the first time, we actually opened up the ideas of the imagination. It's a time where uh, rock and roll was starting properly, where colour movies were really getting out to the world. It was a time where we were able to much more engage with the imagination at a creative level. Um, Absolutely. If we come now to the one after that, which was 1969, I mean, could this be anything other than astrology talking to us? The gods of astrology say, you don't believe us? Have a look at this. Man first walked on the moon. One small step for man, one giant step for mankind on the exact Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in Libra on the 20th of July, 1969. That speaks volumes about Jupiter and Uranus. It was also the time of around this time that Jimi Hendrix died, that the Beatles split up, and it was the end of the first wave of a whole new social experiment. Right, that's very, very interesting. Yes, absolutely. And what about 1983? That came on the heels of the Saturn-Pluto conjunction, didn't it? So uh, Yeah, 1983 was also a really awesome time because... It was, uh, with this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in Sagittarius, it was kind of like people were really beginning to question the validity of orthodox conventional religion. Right. And by the time Pluto passed on that degree, just, just 12 years later, religion was in a decline. Contemporary orthodox religion was in a Dog, decline. Uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. And I think another thing, this idea of a bounce or a resonance from the original Jupiter-Uranus conjunction mm -hmm. is it, well, Uranus doesn't go around as quickly as Jupiter, but it, you, you get these bounces. In 1983, we came really, uh, this was a time when the Cold War was at its most icy, if you like, yes. and we came very, very close and to something very nasty. And also, at this time, Saturn and Pluto were conjunct each other at zero they degrees, were. 29 Libra, zero Scorpio. Yeah, exactly. So, and we were under Margaret Thatcher, and who it was, was 82. The minor strike, the minor strike. whole and under, underworld, you know. You see, you see the advantages of being a senior astrologer. We can actually remember these things. <laughs> 
<laughs> Let's do remember Margaret Thatcher. We've got nearly 100 years astrological experience between us, folks. Okay, so, but as I said earlier, I'm just a child bride, really, so don't let us uh, let's get into that. But it is, it, it is marvellous, and I do remember that period of time. And the whole, you know, Margaret Thatcher and Britain going to war with Argentina. I mean, yes, it was a very Jupiter, Uranus, Saturn, Pluto kind of period of time. It, it, Lots she of said a pattern there, you know. <laughs> yeah, Whenever a politician's in trouble, they go to war. It, it gets them out of trouble. Yeah, it does. Gets them to think about something else. Mm. And we know someone else who did that too, didn't we? Uh, it's still we'll, going on in this yeah, today. We'll, mm. we'll, we'll talk about that. So here we go, 1997. So Steve, what? What was 1997? Well, 1997, Pluto had just moved into Sagittarius. It was the birth, it wasn't the birth of the internet, but it was the birth, it was the emergence of the internet into contemporary society. By 1997, people, were, a lot of people were starting to get emails. Their first websites were being publicly built. The, the computer revolution was taking place. Right. And um, also, I think with the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, this is a different side of it. When we think about Jupiter as celebrity, as things that are, you know, very much out onto the stage, royalty, celebrity, grandioseness, if that's such a word. In 1997, of course, we lost the Princess of Wales. So that was absolutely massive. The whole world, you know, was aware of... Well, everything that went Certain break yeah, down, yeah. Uh, everything to do with that. And Dolly the Sheep, I think, nineteen ninety seven. We cloned the sheep. We cloned the sheep. I think it was nineteen ninety seven. Also, that degree, the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in early Aquarius in 1997, that early Aquarius degree is very close to both the ascendant and the moon in the horoscope of China. Oh, and yes, you the, are right. And this, is, degrees. Yes, this is the emergence, degrees. the start of the emergence of China as a more modernistic entity. Yes. And, you know, going through all this, we're just kind of skimming the surface of all these resonances and the meaning of Jupiter Uranus. It's worthy of a, a really interesting look historically, a book about the astrology. We, we don't really have time to go endlessly into this, but sort of really just to give you a little flavour of the times. And Obviously, if you were born in these years and you have the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, even if it's sort of seven or eight degrees, even 10 degrees apart, you could still consider Jupiter and Uranus are talking to each other. Then this is going to be a very important year for you as well, because you're getting a bounce. And wherever that Jupiter-Uranus conjunction is in your chart, the house it's in, the connections it's making, perhaps to the personal planets, it's going to bring out a lot of that potential that you were born with, and whether you want to think of that in a very uh, matter-of-fact way, psychological way, this, these are your talents, these are your gifts. Now, you know, you have an opportunity to express them. Uh, but also, it's almost like destiny. You were born with this conjunction, which is a very powerful, it's almost like a genius that conjunction, isn't it? A conjunction it's, of genius in some ways. It's, it's, it's not abnormal, it's different. It's different. It's extraordinary. And there are one, one in a hundred, well, one in hundred and fifty people are going to be born with this in their charts, in their natal charts. So, I mean, even allowing a tight orb of say no more than five degrees is still going to be yeah many, many hundreds of thousands of people born with this in their charts. Exactly. And this year, and certainly around this particular time that this is coming to you with the Jupiter Uranus right. conjunction, the things that are happening to you are not accidental. They're part of that life story that uh, you're going through. But the, the purpose of it is, remember those two words, no growth without change. The idea that whatever changes radically in your life at this point is going to the seeds of growth. That's what and, it's all and, about. And just to throw a fishing line into the future here. Imagine what the children being born this year under this conjunction are going to be like about wow. 25, 30 years' time. Wow. And that's a whole other conversation. The technology yeah. by then. Well, exactly, exactly. So um this brings us on to our sort of next little list of things. Is there anybody that we know <laughs> has this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in their charts? And yes, we do. Don't it happens. <laughs> do you want to start us off? Um, do you know what? I'll let you start us off on this one because 
you're you've done I, I, I can be quite spontaneous you've done more research is this an excuse Steve yes <laughs> <laughs> but then I'm suffering from memory problems oh, <laughs> I'm, not, oh, I'm, not, I'm kidding I'm just kidding you. so yeah King Charles the Jupiter Charles. Uranus conjunction at 2150 2149 it depends what your astrology system tells you that is exactly opposite King Charles's son. So we absolutely know that this period of the year and on and off during the year when it gets a bounce from the personal planets or other things that are going on, this is going to be a year like no other for King Charles. Well, obviously we know what began this. We know his cancer diagnosis and he seems to be doing really well with his cancer diagnosis and there are plans for him and Camilla to go off to Australia, uh, uh, you know, in the weeks to come. So it does seem as though it's almost business as usual and the good side of Jupiter and Uranus. We've got a new way of, of, of presenting ourselves as the king. <laughs> we're, we're not out in public all the time, but, you know, there are differences that are, uh, are apparent in the way I, King Charles, as it were, are going to be king, so to speak. So we have that idea, change and growth with King Charles. But we've also got to consider all the members of the royal family, the senior royal family, I'm not going to go through them all because it would take us all day. Everybody has something between about 19 degrees of the fixed signs, that's Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, Aquarius, and about 26 of the fixed signs. So this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction is going to ricochet through that it is. all the royal family. And what does Jupiter-Uranus mean? It means change and revolution. And... In addition to what you just said, please remember also that Pluto is squaring Charles's moon. Absolutely. And that Absolutely. will continue until the end of this year. And that is as much a cause, that is more of a cause to concern for me about his long term, um, not so much his long term health, but his long term plans. Exactly, exactly. And I mean, we. We could both of us take a bit of a leap of faith here. And remember, I don't consider myself psychic, and I don't think you no. consider yourself psychic. We're good astrologers. We yeah. consult, you know, our maps, and we make deductions based on that. So it would seem to be possible that with various things to come in the way of understandings, announcements, decisions made by the royal family, that we are going to see a bit of a change of, a go of, of God. Mm. Um, and how that comes about could be a variety of ways. It may be that uh, the younger generation being William and Catherine uh, will, you know, take over the reins of the monarchy, so to speak, while maybe Charles takes a bit of a backseat or whether circumstances actually dictate what has to happen as opposed to the monarchy itself taking the situation in hand and making some good sensible decisions but I certainly think we are going to see something about the plans for the future of the monarchy in regard to a change of guard it's going to be accelerated isn't yeah it? and probably this year Yes. And the other interesting thing is, is, is we look, we've, because of the Pluto factor as well, remember it's not ever just one thing. And by the way, on the day that Jupiter and Uranus are conjunct, this day as we reach out to you, so to speak, the sun is squaring Pluto. Pluto. So we've got a Pluto bounce as well. So all the royal family, again, we've got that zero degrees of Scorpio, mm. zero to five degrees of the fixed signs, Leo, Aquarius, Scorpio, Taurus. So that's being connected to by Pluto as well, which is why you've got these other really underground, big kind of monumental monarchical changes rather than, yeah. the, than the shock of the new. And, and perhaps with Pluto as well, it's also... Perhaps a, a metaphor for all the absolute nonsense around a lot of the conspiracy theories that we've been getting. Because there's, with Pluto, even even without in, with ill intent, there's always this potential for underground, under underworld backstabbing or manipulation and coercive behaviour. Absolutely, and, but also secrets coming to yes. light. 
you know, things that we didn't know about going back through the ages? And is there a shock to come oh, from some yes, somebody rich. releasing? Yes, rich. <laughs> okay, <laughs> he spoke. He spoke. So I, I wanted to say Prince William, his uh, mid-heaven, naught degrees of uh, Scorpio, Jup oh, no, it's Jupiter, naught degrees, Scorpio. and the mid-heaven, uh, I can't see because I haven't got my glasses on. Uh, the mid-heaven is it's one and a half, what, uh, zero, 38 zero. degrees. Yeah, two degrees, yeah. two degrees, 20 of yeah. Scorpio. So yeah. we've got Pluto squaring William's um, mid-heaven, and that's saying and my Jupiter. role in life, is, and his Jupiter, it's my role in life is changing big time. Pluto and Jupiter are brothers. Yes, as they were with their grandfather, Uranus. Yes. <laughs> yes. So they will kind of get on, but... Well, do they? I mean, this is a family. Do families get on? I don't know. <laughs> family isn't automatically... No. Tribe isn't automatically dictated by flesh and blood. Exactly. It's tribe. unconditionally. I love blood. the yeah. word tribe. Me I too. think that's that's really good. Fact, families can bitch and fight, but yeah. And coming back to William again, this idea that his role is really changing, and we can see that because of all the sort of things that have been happening with health, with both mm. Princess Catherine and with King Charles, then William has had to step up, and it's probably accelerated a process in terms of, uh, you know, taking over the whole helm of the monarchy. This is accelerated. We feel, and it, the astrology would back us up, that it's been accelerated. And although the Jupiter... Uranus conjunction is a little too distant from Williams, Venus, and his Chiron conjunction. It's in there, isn't it? So we've yeah, got Uranus will be on his Venus. Yeah, so, year, he, so we've got yeah, yeah Uranus, Venus, Jupiter. So that's in there with William. If we come to Harry, let, yeah. let's do the Sussex, Sussexes because they're really writing this Jupiter Uranus. We I'm haven't seen William. the last of them. <laughs> in what way? Well. Harry's moon is at 21 Taurus. Meghan's Pluto is at 21 Libra, and her Neptune is at 22 Sagittarius. So his moon is exactly in a finger of fate, as it's called, with her Pluto and Neptune, and the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction hitting all three of them is going to spark them into a different direction in life. Harry's moon is on his IC, very close to his roots, home and foundations. So his role is not yet over. He was born with a very strong trine from the sun to the moon. So he is going to be coming back in some shape or form in the future. Yeah, I, I, I remember some time ago, Nick Campion writing, when, when Harry was born, as, and looking at the configuration in Harry's chart and mm. saying, I wonder if history will repeat itself and Harry will take the prominent role. I mean, it's, it's, it's just an interesting kind of a side, isn't it? That if we... you really go back in history a long time, when both King Charles's died. Oh, you mean past, Charles the first, Charles, Charles the second? Charles the second. Right. There was a brief period where the Duke of York took over the throne. How? Well, that obviously can't happen this time. No, it can't. And just in case any of you are unsure who the Duke of York is, it's Prince Andrew, okay? So, um, 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 I was thinking something here that's interesting. Oh, yes, basic astrology. Uranus on your IC, change of home. Change of home and change absolutely. in family circumstances. Yes, absolutely. Just dead simple. That's all you have to say. What does this mean? Well, we don't know. We're already seeing... Uranus is unpredictable. Absolutely. But Jupiter is growth. So there's also expansion. There's also big change. They can kind of have twins. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's any more children for Harry no, and, and Meghan. No. But I do think it's interesting that she's put together her orchard, whatever it's called. I forget what she's called it. Something over, orchard. I know that over the coming two or three years, Pluto joins her moon, her Saturn and her Jupiter. Right. There may be... Not so much rehabilitation, but there may be a sense of maturity coming up for her in a way that enables her to be more, to be seen as more responsible. Yeah, I mean, I think the really big changes for Meghan are going to be on her car and return, and we are going to have to wait to 49 years old, 50. So we're quite a way off from that. 
Because I think if we look at Megan, Megan is very typical of a certain type of uh, of American woman in 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 the main, you know, creative, entrepreneurial, uh, very active and energetic. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, and that's really, in a way, what, what happened when she joined the royal family is that her way of being active and promoting and doing things didn't really quite jive with how things are conducted in the royal family here in uh, in, uh, in, in old, old England. Um, but what's interesting is that with this new venture of hers, which sort of takes her back to her roots uh, you know, the the the, uh, the the little wasn't a blog, was it? it was a whole site. The, the the gif, what was it called? The I can't remember. It was a short little word, and so she's gone back in a way to her roots, but also developed, and it's going to be a big thing. So reemergence, reemergence, and coming back to the idea of what's going to happen at forty nine fifty. I hope these two can come through their difficulties because. You can't go through what these two have gone through and your marriage isn't dented by the challenges that you've had. It's bound to have been dented. So hopefully these two will come through this tunnel that they're in, because I think if they come manage to stay on board the ship, they'll have some enriching and beautiful times by the time they get into their 49s, 50s. But it's a precarious time. And depending on what really happens in these next two to three years, will tell whether that marriage will, in fact, survive these influences. I noticed, or whether I noticed that Jupiter in Harry's chart is opposite William's sun and moon, mm -hmm. and that Pluto in Harry's chart is on top of William's Jupiter and midheaven. So these yes, two have they, unfinished business. They, they have. And I know that at the time we are recording this video, they are not speaking, really. It's a very, very heart-wrenching uh, kind of rift, really. But they are closely together. This, this whole link with the moon and Venus, yeah, yeah. which is, of course, it's... their mother's Venus. Diana had Venus at 25 of Taurus. And so, you know, the moon in Harry's chart, uh, Venus in um, in William's chart, We've we've got this tie, haven't we? We've got. You know what's going to happen, don't you? <laughs> you tell me. There'll be an informal conversation between Meghan and Catherine, and they'll go, "All right, we're getting older, we're getting wiser. Let's make up and let's bang these two heads together." I hope that happens, and I think it's also their children who mm. are important in this because their children need to know each other because yes. they are the future of the House of Windsor, or however that hands out yeah and um, so yes i have always seen reconciliation at some point when i'm not sure i'm prepared to say when but it's most certainly not right now not right now but it, it it's in there at some point so i'm aware that we're getting a bit royal heavy we are i was going to say let's move so yes. where, do you, where do you fancy going Sue? well <laughs> nations or politicians it's your choice politicians politicians and where are we going to start well, I'm just going to get my pitch in first because I want to talk about a chart that we don't have on our three okay. steps at the moment. Um, the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction is taking place at 21 degrees of Taurus. And in Britain, the British Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, was born on that day with the sun at 21 degrees of Taurus. So he must have been born around the, I don't know, the uh, 11th, 12th, 13th of May. And um, with Jupiter-Uranus on top of his sun, he is to a large extent being seen by a large proportion of the British public and his own political party as a lame duck. Um, I do expect him to probably step down at the election and take a completely different course in life, not just based around making his millions because he's already got enough. I do expect him to take a leading role in some type of charitable thing, uh, to that philanthropic thing, or perhaps with something like the United Nations. But I do expect him to make a major change of course within the next nine months. Oh, I, I think I would agree with that as well. And um, I'm, I'm not, it, it would be impractical for him to resign before the election. Yes. And I don't think anybody within the Tory party would, would expect that. But I think 
the, 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 the government is far from, a, well, far from a united entity. And I think there's going to be a lot of spats and oh. upsets. Uh, and, you know, just how well Rishi you know, negotiates. Hey, my American ways. friends, you think you've got a crazy in your <laughs> politics? Come here. <laughs> yeah, and also I think um, I was looking at that Jupiter-Uranus conjunction and it squares the, the Great Britain Saturn. And we're looking yes. at the 1066 chart. Yes. We're not looking at the United Kingdom. And, and I mean, sat on the sat yes. on close to the mid heaven, or, or uh, rules the mid heaven. I think I think I've actually got the chart here. If we can, yeah. so here we are, Great Britain. Um, we have got here. Where is our Saturn? Yes, yeah, Saturn oh, rules the mid heaven, and the Saturn. Yes, it does. That, that's yeah. absolutely right. And um, uh, Great Britain. Well, what I was, what was I looking at that gave us Saturn at twenty three, Neptune at twenty two? Well, I guess that's it, isn't it? Mm. Uranus conjunct. Uh, Jupiter on Neptune. Well, I suppose that also says what a great giant muddle we're in. We are in a hell of a muddle in this country. We have yet to redefine a, a, a new way forward. Britain has had the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction on its Neptune. We are still dealing with Pluto on top of our national Venus. And um, Neptune is approaching the UK moon and it's going to be there for the next year or nearly years. So Britain is in a state of completely redefining its national identity and its place in the world. And it's always survived and thrived, and it will, but in what way? Yeah, and I think the other thing, I mean, this is a bit literal, but when we think about Neptune and the oceans and mm. water and rivers, we have terrible problems in Great Britain uh, with our water. Um, you know, it's contaminated. We have our water companies are all broke. And, you know, then we think about the amount of rain. This most recent March in Great Britain was the wettest March on record for I don't know how long. And so this idea of Neptune being a deluge, being very watery. Well, we, we see these things in this kind of tier of meaning, don't we? You think about... Any, I, I spent 25 years outside this country. and, and <laughs> Because everyone, of the rain. No, and <laughs> Everyone says, oh, yes, Britons, yes, you like to complain about the weather, don't you? And, and it's like, we do. Yeah, so we'll move, we'll, we'll leave our lovely Britain, which we love dearly, but it isn't a pickle. Oh, that's Great Britain is a, a te terrible pickle. And where should we go? Your choice. Well, let's deal with that one. USA. The USA chart, yeah, why not? We're um, using the Sibley chart, by the way. Folks. Yeah, and this is interesting because there are a couple of charts that people like to use for the USA. But on 9-11, which was, of course, one of, well, I mean, since in, independence, since the United States of America came about, 9-11 was its most defining moment. I mean, arguably, some might say, joining, joining World War II Pearl Harbor, which actually was on a Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. The, the, that's the, the Japanese bomb Pearl Harbor. Uh, America came into the war. Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, Taurus. 1941. But I'm getting away from what I wanted to say was that because of 9-11, the Saturn-Pluto opposition at the time, and remember these two giants, they're always very, very difficult planets to work with. Even in trying, they're difficult. But when they're oh, opposed or in conjunction or square, Saturn and Pluto, they're very difficult. And I know that a lot of you have got transiting Saturn on your Pluto or transiting Pluto squaring. There's something going on with Pluto and Saturn in your chart. And how many of you have had circumstances that you never expected in your life? You've had things taken away from you that you never expected, stripped by Pluto's act, so to speak. And so to come back to the Saturn-Pluto opposition before I get carried away here, it was right on the ascendant, descendant axis yes. of this chart. So I'm very happy with this. I love this USA yeah. chart, and I know you are too. So Yeah. But also, coming up shortly, the Saturn-Neptune conjunction over the oh. next two years is on America's IC and opposite its mid-heaven. So the whole nation, the whole idea of not only American identity, but the way it manifests itself both internally with homeland issues, but externally in terms of its worldview and its public image, it's going to go through a massive, massive rethink and permanent change.
Uh, yeah, and I think the, the Civil War, the American Civil War, was the Saturn Neptune opposition. Well, America 18... is dichotomized at the moment. Yeah, so we're having, or it might have been the conjunction, I mean, working from memory, I can check it out later, but um, it was a, a, a Saturn Neptune event, the Civil War started, and we've now got. Uh, you know, a well, similar kind of pattern here. I noticed that when Jupiter stands still later this year, it stands still exactly on top of the American Mars. Right. And Mars rules Aries, which is its IC. So homeland issues, the, the, the definition of America as a nation state, it's, 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 it's always been, it's, it's a collection of states. It's a union of different states. And, and I do know it's with countries, well, big countries all over the world that they're getting increasingly difficult to manage. So I do expect some type of separation. 